But yeah, usually you want your New Year's Eve to fall around, I don't know, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday or something, right? Um, so at least you'd kind of get a weekend or maybe you want it to fall on a Thursday. So maybe you might have to work one day in a week and then maybe if you're cheeky, you could do a little work from home request. But for you guys going out and getting wasted, I'm envious of you guys if you're actually going to go out and, you know, try and make it work um, in the middle of the week. It's, it's going to be a bit hard, a bit hard for you to do that. In my, I wouldn't want to do that personally myself, but, you know, everyone's got their thing. So, yeah, it's been a bit strange, but hey, here we are. We're, we're ready. We're fresh. I'm back in a hot seat. Um, what have I been doing lately? I've been doing a lot of DJing, a lot of running, um, a lot of chilling at home. Went out to a couple of club nights, which I'm going to review for you, and all that other good stuff in between, isn't it? You know how you know what to expect. Number one streetwear podcast in the world. Streetwear for me encompasses all different facets of life. You know, from self improvement to art to history um, to general, you know, everyday topics that you might see on the interwebs. I do touch upon some celebrity news, but I try not to go down a gossipy way. I try to kind of, you know, frame it as a uh, as a you know living day example of how we can do better, or maybe take a um, uh, lessons or take heed and kind of follow in the footsteps of some of these big outsized pers- um, celebrities that we have in our society at the moment. You know, all those different topics in between, but usually, more often than not, it's just your regular resident default goon, regular average black guy, you know, simple IC3 male, six foot tall, even without trainers, just giving you the business, right? Just a little bit of a mind dump because by and large, in my usual day-to-day life, I'm, you know, I'm suffering from some kind of mental illness. Um, so I allow myself to sit in front of this webcam and direct all my, um, you know, pent up trauma to strangers who I haven't met and who I'll probably never meet. But hey, feeling good. Um, apart from that, what else is going on? What else is going on to mention? Nothing else in it. All the usual stuff is happening. Why not in the year? I'm probably not going to do a really long um, New Year's resolution. Probably not. I tend to do them. Or, or maybe I should, because I'm I'm a bit of a list guy, right? I think of, I think of the my upbringing for the most part was around the church. Um, even in the church, I was very much drawn to the prosperity message, right? This idea that you were going to take yourself from nothing to something. This idea that you would give money in order to get there was crazy. By the time I believed it, I would go to you know hear these preachers uh, talk about money, talk about savings, which I didn't never really spoke about. Really, they mostly spoke about how big their jet was. And how much business they did and the fact that we were blessed to be in their presence, um, Mike Murdoch. But for the most part, I try to, um, I've always been drawn to it. And I remember during those times that there was always this exercise that you did where you kind of had to write down your goals, right? Visualize your things and say it out loud, right? Um, mostly, yeah, visualization exercises, which you hear a lot of um, professional athletes do, people in MMA, right? They visualize their walkout. They visualize, you know, the first couple of rounds, exactly what they're going to do, combos, how they're going to win. They visualize maybe the referee lifting up their hand at the end of the bout. So those things are really important to me, I think, anyway. I found a lot of um, direction and a lot of hope and a lot of motivation um, to achieve my goals through it. And I'm not one of these guys that, you know, listens to self-help books and don't take action. I I, I don't prescribe to that, which is what made... um, watching the whole tony robbins documentary on netflix very uncomfortable especially when the when they highlighted that one black lady who was you know obsessed with kind of a bit of a tony robbins groupie or essentially just a you know a stand for self-help gurus she'd go everywhere and anywhere tony robbins was throwing an event and she'd never seemed to take action she just seemed to be waiting for some sort of magic bullet to hit her or you know something to come down from the heavens and tell her what to do next which is not the way forward i think those tony robbins classes and all those kind of things are they can be a bit naff, they can be a bit cringy, but they do provide some kind of framework for somebody. Imagine your your average everyday guy that doesn't have any idea how they're going to get a YouTube channel started, right? Um, or they're procrastinating. That's probably a better example. Maybe having someone like a Tony Robbins say to you, you know, you've only got one life to live, time's running out, you're, you know, uh, what you call it, you're uh, not doing, you're not doing um, your talent any justice, you're effectively taking uh, food out your kids mouths by not following your dreams i don't know these little triggers that could kind of get you started right um to kind of get going okay cool set up your thing you can set up your youtube channel right on your phone this, this is why i like gary v for instance who gets a bit of a bad rapper he's he provides a lot of actionable steps right get out your phone you can you know you can make a business straight from your phone take go to the what well, without gary v stuff he says go to a thrift store sell stuff online 